Today, our champion, Gary Carrington of Plaston, New Hampshire, faces the challenge of Joe Ashline of Nashua, New Hampshire, on Candlepin Bowling. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candlepin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and I'm sure you're all aware of the fact that uh, we do our taping right here at uh, the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, on the Worcester Current Pike, just a little bit west of the city of Boston. It is always three strings of Candlepin Bowling, and total pinfall determines our winner. Each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir. They are provided by the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. We also have guaranteed prize money. $1,200, 700 of that goes to the winner, half of that 350 goes to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string. Obviously, should they tie, they split that at $25 apiece. Many other opportunities for our bowlers to make money. Gary Carrington knows all about that. He cleaned up last week. Uh, and uh, most of you know how that is done, but I'll remind you as the program goes along. Right now, let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? Okay. This is the one we've been waiting for, Ashline against Carrington, uh, the doubles team. And uh, I noticed that already there's been a little psyching going on. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that to each other. <laughs> I know you rooted for him last week. And, and you know, you've both been in the championship show. I was just looking. Uh, what a heartbreaker. That I, I forgot you lost by one pin in that thing, huh? Yeah, I haven't forgot yet. <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't. So it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> wow, yeah. Tom Olster, 138, Joe Ashline, 137. Yep. Son of a gun. Oh, boy. That, and, uh, well, need I remind you of last, <laughs> last, last year's program when you were second seed, huh? And then a guy named Berger came along. And, I, uh, yeah. I, I've been second seed twice, and I, I get knocked out both times. And, well, listen. I don't like it too much. No. You, know, <laughs> you threw a 448 uh, last week against Ed Zernike, so uh, I would say that. Uh, and I'm looking here at uh, Joe had a 426 to qualify once before on this program. And you're both, I don't know, you, you're going to break pins, I think. You both fired the ball so fast. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're finesse balls. Oh, no, sure you are. <laughs> hey, listen, it should be a great one. I want to wish you both uh, a lot of luck. And I'm looking forward to it. We'll get underway right after this. Here is today's challenger, Joe Ashline, Nashua, New Hampshire. Two full on the head pin, and he gets a spread eagle. Oh, what a shot! He just made the spread eagle for a spare. What a shot! A beauty. You do not often see that. But I don't have to tell you that. You know that as well as I. Eight, that's the fill, and he is left with six and ten to convert for the spare. He has it. So a great start for Joe Ashline. Now our defending champion, Gary Carrington. Five and seven. That's what Gary's looking at. Oh, pretty spare. Seven is the fill on his spare, and he is now looking at the one, two, ten. Wood and back of the two pin. He did not make the spare. He got the one, two, left the ten. It's a ten. Joe Ashline. League average, 130, 130. 
Six. That's the fill, and he's looking at four horsemen right side. One, three, six, ten. Missed the head pin. And in doing so, also missed $50 in bonus money. Waiting for a piece of wood to settle down. Now it moves just as he's about to fire. It's the head pin, as you know, and he's all over it for the 10. Almost a spread eagle. He has no wood to help, and he's looking at two, four, seven, six, and ten. That takes care of the left side. And the right. Always amazes me when a bowler can fire the ball as fast as Joe does and be as accurate. And the lob has just cost him a strike. So now he rolls another. And it is a spare. You know, Ralph Stewart is our lob line judge, and he sits right on that lob line. Five. He has diamond right plus the ten. And he makes it. So with a bonus ball still to be thrown by Gary Carrington, the score right now is Ashline 54. Challenger Joe Ashline, employed as a sales rep for Time Electronics. Three and four are the pins that are up. Oh, pretty shot. You know how difficult that is to make the three go across and get the four, but he did it. League average 130, high single 203, high triple 498. And he has a strike. Now Gary Carrington. Working on a spare, he gets seven with a triangle to make. Six, nine, and ten. Yes, he's got it. So, except for the lob in the second, he would be all marks. up and he's got it for another now four in a row now 
Now Joe Ashline with two in a row. He had two marks, then two tens, and now two marks. And the last one was a strike, so he has two bonus balls. Here's the first. And that one went off to the right. He got six. He left the head pin plus the five and also has the seven and eight. As you can tell, he got nothing. Whoa. Nothing again. So it turns out to be six as a fill and six in the box. Yeah. One, three, seven, eight, ten. One piece of wood which is rolling now and stopping right in back of the three pin. And oddly enough, he got the one. The three stayed there. The piece of wood went out and seven, eight, and ten are still there. So double sixes. Four in a row for Gary Carrington. Eight with uh, five and eight to pick up and wood right across it. So it appears that he will have another. Yes, mark it. Another $50 in bonus money. Gary right now is in the lead for our next True Value Championship show, the live show, $20,000 in prize money, last Saturday evening in August. And he puts a strike on top of that. $200 in bonus money. Joe Ashline. Joe looking now with no wood at the three, six, and ten standing pin. He bounced the ball at the foot foul line, and it went astray. This time he's got it, but it's for a ten. Joe bounced another one off the foot foul line, but he was able to knock down seven pins. He has the seven pin alone, and over on the right, the six and ten with two pieces of wood. He's giving that a good look. He concentrated on... Uh, Trying to get that pin over on the left, the seven pin, and as a result was not able to get the, the ten. It's a nine. And a disappointing string for Joe Ashline after an excellent start. The first six boxes were fine. Gary Carrington, remember, He's still alive for bonus money after you get three in a row, then every consecutive mark in that same string, as long as he keeps it going, is worth $50 a piece. He's already up to $200 in bonus money as he fires again. This time he gets five, and he's looking at diamond left plus the seven. The diamond already is made up of the two, four, five, and eight. He also has the seven pin. Is it going to go? No. So it stops there, the bonus streak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five
143 and a box to go. So he will also pick up $50 for winning the first string. Four horsemen left side and the 10 pin with wood in front of it. Nope. A little too fine, and he punched out the two pin. Left one, four, seven, ten. It's a seven box. And an even 150. Congratulations from his doubles teammate, who was his challenger. He's off the middle string. Here's Gary Carrington, Plasto, New Hampshire. One, two, and four. Those are the three pins standing. Gary's first appearance on our show was back in 1981, and he was a winner. He has another spare. One, two in a row that time before losing to Lee Buskey. Bonus. Eight more and a spare leave. Six and ten. That's what he needs for another mark. Mark it again. Joe Ashline, today's challenger. He's left with the diamond on the right side. Let's see what he can do with the three, five, six, and nine. Nope, another win for the diamond. Tough spare leave. Nine box. That puts him 38 pins down. He winds up with five and six side by side and no wood uh, in a very favorable position. There's only one piece of wood and it's in right in back. So he doubled nines here in the first two boxes of the middle string. And Gary Carrington has double spare. Eight is the fill. And he's looking at the old Woolworth split, the five and ten, but he has a couple of pieces of wood which should help him to make this because one of them is directly in front of the ten. Let's see. Oh, he had to hit the five, and he just went to the left side of it. That was a surprise. Garrington, Gary Carrington's... That was a good one, Garrington. Gary Carrington. <laughs> uh, league average 134, high single 195, high triple 471. He's employed as a pipe fitter. Both men are married. Joe Ashline is uh, the father of one son. Gary Carrington has two. Matt. Carrington, Mickey Carrington, and Derek Ashline. Just missed, left the seven. Be 
piece of wood rolling, rolling. Now it has stopped. And he makes it for the 10. Now Joe Ashline. Joe leaves the one and two. No longer. There. That was a hammer. When they go down, zap, like that, that is a hammer. Okay, uh, two bonus balls still to be thrown by Joe Ashland. The fifth box of the middle string, Gary Carrington. Seven is alone over on the left. On the right, he has two pieces of wood in front of the six and ten. Went a little too far was able to uh, move the three and a piece of wood, but he's left seven and 10. He leaves the seven, so it's a nine. It was too full on the head pin, but he has so much action on the ball that they just kept tumbling, 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 and everything now is down except the three pin. Obviously, he did not miss it, so he has his spear. Now, let's see whether Joe Ashline can pick up some bonus money. He has spear, then strike. He's working on the strike right now. He has two in a row. And all of you out there know what that means. Stand by. No, he does not have three in a row, which would have given him an extra bonus of $1,000. He has a fill of six. He's working on the four horsemen right side to try to make the spare for $50 in bonus money. No, too full on the head pin. Ten. That big lead has been cut now down to 12. He has a chance to add to it right now as he works on this spare. Gets a fill of eight. Five and seven. That's what he's going to try to convert. He's got a piece of wood that's off to the left, but I, I don't think he'll be using it. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, he tried to just hit the right side enough to kick it over to get the seven, but he got just the five. Now he comes back with a strike. Joe Ashline had cut the 29 pin deficit to 12. Now it's popped up to 20. And we'll see what it'll be after these two boxes. Whoa, looked like he was going to have a strike, but he left the five pin, the king. 
Well, I'll tell you, the castle walls came tumbling down in a hurry, but the king is still there. Ooh, he just missed that. He fired it. You'd think the breeze would have knocked it over. He threw it so hard. Now he gets it. There was a piece of wood which was a distraction, in all fairness to him, so he didn't want to hit it. Once again, he has only the five pin. No distracting wood this time, however. I tell you, they amaze me. They're 60 feet away. They're firing that small ball, and firing it, I mean, at a skinny pin. First bonus ball. How about that? Now he has two strikes in a row. Will he get the third for you know what? No. He got just four. Couple of more. He still has four pins standing. Side by side, he's got the four and five, and in back the seven and ten. It's a seven box. A 139. Joe Ashline, right now at 111, with a bonus ball still to be thrown. Two boxes to go. He got eight. He's looking at one and three with wood to the right of it. He has it. One twenty nine. Plus this next one. Remember, it was a 29-pin deficit, and he is going to win this middle string. Let's see what he can get now. First bonus ball. Oh, first bonus ball punches out two. A half Worcester on the right, the three and nine. Just missing the head pin. You know how close it is when he can punch out the three. Now he goes to the left side, and uh, the total is going to be six on the fill. A 155. Now, look at it. The 29-pin lead is down to 13. And Joe Ashline picks up $50 in bonus money for winning the middle string by 155 to 139. However, Gary Klein about to lead off in the third string. He's got a spare lead. The three and the five. he did not get it that was a surprise he gets it for a 10 
strike. I know what you're thinking. Supposing he had made that spear. Because I'm thinking the same thing. All right, let's see what Gary Carrington can do now. His lead of 29 pins. After one, it was cut to 13. After two. He's looking at one, seven, and eight with a couple of pieces of wood perpendicular to himself right now that are between the one and the eight. But he made it. Spare to start off. And so he will add to that 13-pin lead with what he gets on this next ball. Eight is the pill. And uh, the pin that toppled actually was the object pin because it was the six. Now he has nine and ten. However, he has a piece of wood to the left of the nine and one to the right of the ten. He hit them right where they almost came together and made it. So a pair of spears. Now let's see what Joe Ashline can do with his strike. Joe's first ball was too full on the head pin. He almost got a spread eagle. He left the 2-4-7 and the 3-6. The 10 did go down along with the 1-5, 8, and 9. 7 is the fill, but he still has three pins standing, and he'll be working right now on the 3 and the 6. close to a strike he left the seven pin he's got it that brings up Gary Carrington who has two marks in a row the fill and he got nine he has the eight pin to pick up Ralph Stewart calls time has to go down and check on some wood to see whether he has a piece of wood that is going to roll toward the deadwood line or not he indicates that it's okay it's going to stay but there is a piece of rolling wood at the moment will he get three in a row piece of wood rolling around which is just one of them staying quiet. And then there's one behind it, but still in front of the eight pin. He's got it. So three in a row and another $50 in bonus money. Seven. That's the fill, and he's looking now at one, three, ten. A couple of pieces of wood. Now a third rolling over where the six pin would be. Made it. He has four in a row. Joe Ashline working on a spear. Joe gets six, but he gets a tough split. He leaves four, seven, six, ten. He's looking it over, a piece of wood rolling. While I have a chance, our crew today is Bob Oliver, 
Chris O'Hare, George Manning, John Rosenfeld, and in post-production, Doug DeWitt, videotape. He takes the left side, the six and ten still there. Don Riley, of course, is our statistician and coordinator. Phil Rubin is our producer director. It's a nine box, and we already mentioned Al Giglio, Keith Williams, and Ralph Stewart. Oh, he wants a corner to go, but neither did. So now he has Wood in front of the seven pin on a parallel plane. Then he's got another piece that's perpendicular. He's got the ten pin over there and another piece of wood on the right. And he is going to use that, but it didn't work. I mean, it took out the ten, but it didn't divert the ball over to get the seven. Gary Carrington has begun this uh, third string with four marks in a row. And he's picked up so far another hundred dollars in bonus money. He's up to three fifty. Seven is the fill. However, he has side by side pins in the four and five. He also has the seven. Now there's wood that's across in front of the four and uh, seven. Another piece off to the right. He's waiting for it to settle down and to see whether he's going to use it or not. It's an eight. Uh, two of those pins that were knocked down were knocked down when the ball was in the gutter. Two full on the head pin. He winds up with a split. Three, six, ten on the right. Four and seven on the left. One piece of wood, it's out where, about where number one would be. And he got everything except the seven. Ten. Ten opposite of ten. Thirty-one pin lead. Four boxes to go. Line gets himself another strike. Joe has two strikes in a row, so it'll be a little fun when he comes up again. Remember, an extra bonus of $1,000 for three strikes in a row. Gary Carrington. And Gary has a strike. Gary Carrington fires. He's got two in a row. How about that? They have matched. Now, let's see. Two strikes in a row, and three in a row is a $1,000 bonus, and they're both on their way to 400. Okay, Joe Ashline gets the first crack at it. Nine is the drop. He leaves the 10 pin. 
He has missed his $1,000 bonus, but he can still get 50 if he picks off this 10 pin. Oh, boy. Why should I be nervous? And he got it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he actually missed it. And he turns around. You should see the grin on his face as he looks at his doubles partner, Gary Carrington. Did you see what I just did? I missed that, but I got a break. The wood came off the wall and took it for another $50 in bonus money. He got eight on the drop there. Will he get it? Oh, no. Oh, that was so important because he's, tr he's already over 400, but he wanted a big 400. Four twenty four. A four twenty four. Oh, and he just missed that spare. Oh, you think he'll think about that a little bit? Gary Carrington. Oh, and is he going to get it? The pin is rocking back and forth. The five pin, but a piece of wood came up against it. He has missed $1,000 by just the slimmest of margins. Each of them threw a nine drop, but Gary Carrington's pin, the five, was rocking back and forth, and it just wouldn't go down. He makes it for a spare. And another $50 in bonus money. Oh, they both just missed getting $1,000 extra. Five is the fill here, and he will have difficulty in converting it. He's at 442, plus five, 447. Nine. A 162, and the doubles partners have both gone over 400, and we really have ourselves a total here of 451. Gary Carrington has added to the 448 that he rolled last week. He has rolled a 451. Incredible. Eight. 75, wow, final 451 to 424. I think that when we have two 400s and a total of 875, we need a standing O almost for these two guys. How about that? Yeah, what a mess. And would you believe it is not the highest combined total, but Gary Carrington's in the highest he was the loser the last time to Dick O'Connell. <laughs> this time, his doubles partner has joined him. How about that? Just sensational. Okay, 875, we really don't expect that we're going to have a winner in here. Now, I'd be quite surprised if we do. But as you know, e even if that person is nowhere near that total of 875, uh, he or she will be rewarded with a handsome prize from the Parker Pen Company. All right, enough of that. Now let's see who is going to get a chance at 8.75. Okay, this one comes from Uxbridge, Massachusetts on South Main Street. Charles Foley's guess is 7.78. Okay, so we add another 50, and next week our home viewer will be up to 150. Right now, let's see, high low is 2.75. Okay, Gary. Okay, Joe. Sorry, Joe. All right. 
Oh, come on now. Is that any attitude to have? Boy, you almost did, didn't you, huh? Okay. Go get Derek. Over here, guys, if you would, please. All right, Derek. How are you? Tell me you want to go bowling. Are you, uh, where do you get the name Derek? He wouldn't be named, uh... Derek uh, Sanderson or some guy like that. Yeah, uh, my son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Hey, listen, uh... You did get the smallest one. I don't know whether it's any consolation to you or not. I don't think it will be. <laughs> well, uh, all I'm going to tell you is that one other guy had a losing score higher than you. And I bet he's in a true value show this year, too. Joe, 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 the, uh, Joe Tavernese, and he did Mark make Joe. the show with yeah. a 425. That's right. Yeah, I know, so, Joe. So, so 424 for you. So you, oh, you know, keep your fingers crossed, right? A It'll be a long year now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll give you the 448 he doesn't need. <laughs> I already asked him about that. He won't. <laughs> you already asked him. He won't, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Joe, uh, with 350 plus 300 in bonus money, 650. Nice to meet you, Derek. Bye-bye. Hey, Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, and Gary, another sensational performance, huh? How about that? Uh, I knew I had to ball good against Joe. The, the guy's got one of the best strike balls I've ever seen. So. Boy, does he fire it, huh? Okay, uh, what do I have for you? About uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 550 on top of seven, something like that? Yeah, you'll take That's it, good. huh? That's good. <laughs> I don't know right now who your uh, challenge is going to be, but there are a lot of good guys winning some of those roll-offs. So mm -hmm. Everybody comes on here, it's good. You better, be, you better be tough. Okay, we'll see you next week. Mike Pullen from Hudson, New Hampshire, and Tim Lipke from Londonderry, New Hampshire, take on the challenge of Joe Tavernese.